Aloha, my name is Juliana Geronimo, and over the last decade, I've been blessed to support people along their healing journey as a wellness coach. Something that this last decade of exploration has inspired me to speak about, especially pertinent considering this global unfolding that we've been experiencing this year. And I feel like the biggest teaching that I've been receiving is the importance of our health. Now, when it comes to health, we need to recognize that self-care is going to be different from one person to the next. How you care for your body is going to look different than how the next person cares for their body. Now, however, there are some parallels and that's something that I'm going to speak about with you today. So two things that you need to bring with you along your healing journey, two best friends to invite along with you are discernment and curiosity. So discernment. This is a quality, this is an ability that gives us the chance to recognize what is truth from what is not. What resonates with us, what doesn't resonate with us. Thanks to the internet, there is so much health information out there, so many health experts, health leaders sharing so much valuable information. Now, the other side of the coin is that with so much information, one person says, you need to do this, you need to eat that. The other person says, don't do this, don't eat that. So this is where discernment comes into play. When you're sifting through this information, you will be able to recognize with practice what resonates with you, what doesn't. Curiosity, number two. You got to bring curiosity along with you because along the healing journey, it requires an open mind and an open heart to be curious, to explore new foods, new exercises, new lifestyle habits. These are two things that you definitely should keep with you for the ride. Now, when it comes to health, traditionally, typically, we tend to consider within a physical context. Now, our physical aspect is definitely a part of our overall health. Yet now we're seeing with a lot of research being published on mindfulness, on alternative medicines, Eastern medicine practices, ancestral medicines, we get to see that there's a lot more to our health than just this physical aspect. So this is what I'm going to dive in with you today. And I want to share with you five main influences on your health. So the first is mental health. Now we know if we want to be physically healthy, they say, watch what you eat. Now, if we want to cultivate mental health, it's important to be mindful of what we think. Our mental health has to do with our thoughts, our beliefs, and how that is influencing our health, our body, whether we realize it or not. So this is to be mindful of what you're consuming on a psychological level. For example, which books you're reading, what type of conversation topics you're engaging in, what type of movies you're watching, which news stations you're tuning into, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things that are influencing your psychology, all of these things that are good to be mindful of so that you can have peace of mind. This is not to say stick your head in the sand and ignorance is bliss, yeah? But it is to say, be mindful of where you go for your information. Be mindful of what you engage your focus and attention in that is so precious, that is influencing your health. So mental health tip. If you would love a simple practice to cultivate a healthy mind, I definitely recommend meditation. This is something that I know benefits every single person that really gives it an effort. If you're curious to learn more about the benefits of meditation, I did a previous video about that. Of course, you can also send me a message. I would love to share my meditation resources with you. That's number one. Number two, second influence on your health, your behaviors. Now, have you ever noticed how your behavior patterns are influencing your health? And whether we realize it or not, each choice we make each expression, each habit has an effect. Now, I'm not saying don't skip that glass of wine with dinner, but what I am saying is just learn to keep a balance and learn to keep a sense of mindfulness in how you are choosing to engage yourself. 
what habit patterns you're choosing to engage in in your life and how this is influencing you and affecting you. So, behavioral health tip. I definitely recommend a practice of journaling, which you can grab a notebook, a pen, set a timer for five minutes, 10 minutes, and at the end of your day, just keep a log. What were these main instances throughout your day that triggered a strong behavioral response? Notice what were the main habits that you noticed you engaged in throughout the day, as well as what the effect was. Noticing how our behavior patterns can either uplift us, inspire us, or bring us down. So number three are emotions. Now, it's normal to have emotions. This is a natural part of life. And this is a beautiful part of this experience. Emotions are kind of a tricky topic, especially here in the West, and especially as a man, especially for those that are identifying in the gender of a male, there is a narrative that expressing our emotions is a sign of weakness and it is looked down upon which is inspiring many of us to not express our emotions. Now, in my personal experience, the reverse is true. Not expressing your emotions is a sign of weakness. So for example, somebody says something to you, it inspires anger, but you choose not to express it. A week goes by, something else happens, it triggers anger again. Another day goes by, it triggers more anger. You're not expressing it. Another day goes by, triggers more anger. At this point, your anger has risen to such a level that somebody says just one little thing that really wasn't personal to you. You just happen to be the receiver of that and you snap, you lash out on them, you direct all your anger to them. You have an emotional outburst. Who knows, you damage the relationship. You may act in a way that doesn't feel good for you and your health definitely takes a dip. So this is an example of how not expressing our emotions influences our health. Now, do you ever notice how you do express your emotions? When you feel especially these intense emotions rising, what is the tendency? How do you navigate them in those moments? For example, when you feel sadness coming in, what do you do in those moments? Do you have a tendency to distract yourself? When you feel anger coming up within you, just like in the example, do you immediately lash out the moment the anger comes out? So something that I definitely want to make clear is that if we want to cultivate a good emotional health, it requires a sense of honesty, a sense of acceptance that we do have emotions and we can learn how to relate with these emotions in a healthier way with practice. So emotional health tip, like the previous one, I definitely recommend the practice of journaling. You can have a journal for your behavior patterns, you can have a journal for your emotions, or put it into different sections on the same page. And take a log at the end of the day, what were the main emotions that I felt today? In what situations, what triggered them? Was I in a certain environment? Did a certain person trigger that emotion in me? And what did I do in that moment? How did I navigate that emotion? Did I express that emotion? How did I express that emotion? Or did I keep it in? Now, number four, physical influence on our health. So there are so many different aspects of our life that influence our physical health. And I'm going to focus on a few now. So sleep, the quality of your sleep influences your physical health. So how is the quality of your sleep? Do you wake up feeling rested in the morning, recharged, energized? Do you wake up feeling exhausted, more tired than when you went to bed? And if you do, I welcome you to become curious and look around your sleeping environment and see is this a peaceful space for sleeping? Do you feel tranquil? Do you feel comfortable in your sleeping environment? Do you feel comfortable in your bed? What are some of your sleeping rituals? What do you have a tendency to engage in before bedtime? For example, 
Do you love to watch movies right before bed? I definitely wouldn't recommend an action movie or a scary movie before bed if you want to have a tranquil sleep. What you could do instead is watch maybe a more peaceful movie, documentary, maybe go for a walk around your neighborhood. Maybe you could do a little bit of stretching, do a little bit of yoga to begin to wind down to sleep time. Then we also have exercise, which is definitely an important aspect of our physical health. The beauty of exercise is that there's so many different types. And again, it's not a one size fits all. The best type of exercise is the exercise that you're inspired to do that feels really good for you. So for me, one of my favorite exercise is surfing. For you, it could be gardening. It could be going for a walk at sunset around your neighborhood. It could be going to a dance class. The most important thing is that you're moving your body. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're moving your body in a way that feels good to you. And exercise gives you the chance to develop a relationship and an awareness of your physical body. Now, a physical health practice tip is once a day, can be first thing in the morning, can be at midday, can be at the end of the day. Check in with your physical body and notice what does it need? Is your physical body needing more rest? Are you needing to drink more water? Are you needing a little bit more movement? What is it that your body is needing in each moment? And the more you practice tuning in, the more you will be able to sense what is needed, what areas of your body to tend to, etc. Then we come back to number five. Your energy influences your health. So everything has energy and it's like a life force energy. So in India, the yogis call it prana. In China, it is called chi. Here in Hawaii, it's called mana. And for my Star Wars fans out there, it's called the force. So we are energetic beings and our level of energy directly influences so many aspects of our life. When your energy is high, you're uplifted, you're joyful, you're warm, you're open. When your energy is low, you're depressed, you're unmotivated, you don't really feel like doing anything. So as we go through life, it's not about keeping your energy as high as possible, but it is more about learning how you regulate your life force energy. And it's a lot simpler than you think. It's not about techniques. It's about feeling. It's about the curiosity. Ask yourself, take a moment and reflect. What brings your life force down? Which environments, which people, which foods? What brings your life force up? and being able to recognize that you spend more time in those activities, in those environments, relating with those people that elevate your life force energy and minimize the time you spend in those aspects that bring your life force energy down. So something that is really important to recognize with these five main health influences is that they're all interconnected they all have this beautiful dance and they're all relating with one another. So one way that we can recognize this interconnectedness is that if you have this intention to improve one aspect of your health, typically the other areas of your health are benefited as well. For example, you feel inspired to start a meditation practice 10 minutes in the morning, set a timer or download an app. Easy. So psychological influence on your health, mental aspect. You get to practice quieting your mind, calming your thoughts, beginning to establish and cultivate tranquility in your mind, peace in your mind. On a behavioral level, you get to recognize which actions are influencing you in what way. As you meditate, you get to gain awareness of how you express yourself and the effect that those expressions are having on you and others around you. On an emotional level, you have the opportunity 
to check in with yourself emotionally and choose what you do with those emotions. Choose how you relate with those emotions and begin to cultivate a level of emotional balance in your life. On a physical level, deep and rhythmic breathing, your central nervous system loves this, calming your body, bringing your heart rate down, and your physical body is able to operate at a higher level. And in an energetic aspect, by meditating, you are cultivating more life force energy in your body. So as I mentioned over the last uh, decade, I have been exploring health in my own life. And my intention to share this video with you today is to give you a sort of introduction, to give you a sort of foundation to get you started and to begin to ask questions. Now, if you're finding that you want to dive a little bit deeper, this is something that I have been blessed to offer in my one-on-one -on -one healing sessions, being able to go in and explore these different aspects of your life to see where is this main imbalance that's causing a dip in your health, as well as what practical steps we can take to bring harmony and clarity in your life. If this is something that you are interested in, something that resonates with you, you're welcome to send me a DM, send me a message. We can speak a little bit more about it. If you love this video, I invite you to share with me what were some of your main insights? What are some of your main takeaways? You can leave a comment below. We'll keep the conversation going. And if you found value in this video, please share this with your loved ones, share this with your friends, share this with your family. The more people that we have in this world that are taking care of themselves, the healthier we are, are all, <laughs> the healthier we are all on a collective level. So wishing you a blessed day, wishing you a blessed week, wishing you a blessed health journey. I am so grateful for this opportunity to share this with you, that you may have received something beneficial from watching this. Aloha.